Good morning and welcome to Monday's edition of the Morning Briefing. It's a massive week for Rangers. It's not to be underestimated. PSV, then Celtic, the transfer window uh, coming to a close as well. Stevie, what's your thoughts on the week ahead? Yeah, a couple of easy games on the horizon. I expect some tough encounters in reality, but I'm um, looking forward to it. You know, these are the kind of games you want to have and I don't see why there's any reason why Rangers can't have a really good week. I think things are progressing quite nicely. You know, it's been a couple of good weekends for us. So, you know, I hope the feel-good factor continues, you. There's certainly a sense, Stevie, that feel-good factor is rising. Um, you know what it's like in Glasgow and, you know, what happens one side of the city can affect the other side of the city. The narrative can change pretty quickly, but... You know, it was also a good weekend for Rangers. We were both in Dingwall. We'll, we'll talk about that Ross County result, but, you know, travelling down the road and having the radio on, nobody really expected himself to drop points to, to St. Johnson, but that's also a massive boost as well. <clears throat> yeah, it certainly is. Look, you know, um, any kind of disharmony and, and bad results and things for them is, is much welcomed, and they would say the same thing for us. So um, it was funny, you and <clears throat> actually... Travelling down the road, as you say, or travelling up the road back to Glasgow. We actually stopped at House of Brewer, which is just past yeah. people yeah. and things like yeah. that. We were in there just as a wee, a wee toilet stop, stop, just at about five to five. And none other than Michael Beale was right behind us in the shop with a massive smile on his face. So um, I think it just sets us up nicely for the, the week ahead. Nobody expected it, but, you know, we've got a real, real opportunity this week to to really kick on and put some serious pressure on them. So, you know, let's um, concentrate on PSV first, but that game on Sunday becomes really massive and, and we've got a real opportunity. And I think that this team is starting to motor on in the right direction. It's not fully there yet, Ewan, um, but I think it's certainly heading in the right direction and I can see lots of little promising signs, both individually and collectively. So it was a good result on Sunday. It turned out into a very good day. Um, Saturday, rather, sorry. It turned into a very good day. So I'm looking forward to the week ahead. It was certainly a, a very long day for us both, wasn't it? I think it was a 6 a.m. start um, to get up to Dingwall. And we'll just we'll touch on it. We had the five stars night on Friday as well with um, you know the three Danish players. Great night. I thought you know everyone at five stars, Graham, Lauren, everyone put a fantastic event on. Stevie, you'd echo that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, obviously, I'm biased because they are my employees as well, so um, I, I can't say much else. But it was a great night. I would uh, urge people just to, if they've never been to a night like this, to check it out. It was brilliant to hear from Brian Loudrop, obviously, Peter Lovenkranz and Eric Wanderson, who I don't think ever publicly spoke about his, his time at Rangers before. So that was interesting to to hear and, and to, to meet the three gents as well. So it was a great night. It was well put on by by five stars and it kind of set us up. But like you said, I wasn't home until about one and then I was up at four to run. I left the house at quarter past five to go to Canvas Lang and get my lift up to Dingwall. And we didn't return home until best part of eight o'clock. Traffic was particularly bad on the way home because there was an event on in Aviemore with uh, I think there was a biking event on and things like that. So it was a long, long day, you but do you know what, you it's, it's funny because nobody cared around about 10, 10 to 5 when that result came in. There was a, a massive almighty cheer. And in the wee convoy, there was a few toots of the horn as well. So it was a, it was a, good, it was a good day and I'd settle for being delayed for that to happen any time. Yeah, no, no, it was a, a long day, but certainly a, a good one from a Rangers perspective. As always, obviously, we've got a member section. We put extra videos up, three to five a week, you know, in-depth analysis, interviews, all that sort of stuff. It's two ninety nine a month to join. You can join that and get all that extra content. You obviously get these morning briefings without the adverts as well. A lot of people uh, complain about it. It's YouTube these days, isn't it? It's a, it's a money-making scheme. There's, there's more and more adverts all the time. But if you do um, join up to our, our service, you can get less adverts on the video. So thanks very much, John Turner, for becoming a member this morning. We do appreciate it. Um, we'll, we'll just go on and talk about the, the weekend game. Um, Kamaru is one of the big talking points, so we'll start on that. He's obviously not in the European squad on, on Tuesday night. Michael Beale said at his press conference on Friday, Stevie, that at the moment Kamar can't play three games a week, so there's no point including him in that squad. You know, he's very much wanting to Kamar to kind of focus on the domestic games. 
and you know, there's, there's a chance that you know later on in the season, once Rangers know if we're in the Champions League or they're in the Europa League, that Kamar might come back into the reckoning for that. But just looking at his performance at the weekend, he was out for I think it was his first start in 16 months, Stevie. Um, he came in and he done exactly what he needed to do. He, he showed exactly what he's like as a player. He highlighted his qualities again, and you know that's what all these attacking players. There's so many people competing for a number of positions at the moment, but Kamar Roof done exactly what he needed and, and grabbed his opportunity. Yeah, he was good. He had a solid 60 minutes, and it's exactly what we needed in terms of of his continued recovery. He got one chance, I think, Ewan, and he took it superbly. There's a, a great discussion amongst Rangers support that he is our best number nine in terms of finishing, and I think that's really hard to disagree with. He's a likeable guy. I sincerely hope that he is um, over his troubles. And the thing is, you know, as we've spoke about all summer about Kamar Roof, I think I think he can finish. You look at the goals he scored. You know that with that moment out, and I think I was Antwerp with a big long range shot in his own half speaks volumes for his quality but you look at goals like Benfica at home in the 2-2 draw it's a couple of goals against Celtic at Ibrox like Kamar Roof can finish and he's a player and if you think about the fact that if Kamar Roof can stay fit he can bag 20 goals I don't think that's that's an unreasonable statement and that's 20 goals that we've not had and we've missed and if you look at the, the title winning season a couple of years back that 20 goals that Kamar Roof provided was absolutely vital so Michael Beale managing him the best way possible, I've got no issues with. I would love to have Kamar Roof for Wednesday night at PSV because I think if anyone, a chance falls to anyone in that squad, you know, Kamar Roof's probably right up there with the one that you would pick to take it. So it's just unfortunate the way it is. But I think that it's the right decision at the moment that he just tries to up his kind of fitness levels. And and we concentrate on on getting him back fully fit, you. But it was a, a great sixty minutes for him. He spoke really well in the press conference afterwards. He says that everything's about fifty six, so he certainly knows what it's all about. And I back him to have a really good season if he can kick on and, and stay fit. And I think as well, Michael Beale has a better handle on how to judge him and how to manage him as well. So I'd maybe trust. Michael Beal with him a wee bit more as well, like like Gerard knew when to use him and things like that. So let's just hope we can get, you know, Kamar Roof to a level of fitness where he is going to provide. Because if he does, then I'll, I'll back him to hit twenty goals this season. And their twenty goals is probably as vital to our team as any because we haven't had them. So it's an additional kind of um, firepower that we need. I think I read my mind this morning, Stevie, because I was going to go straight on to his interview, which you can watch. Um, and it's entirety on on our Twitter page as well. Now we're now we're got a blue tick back again, and also on our, our YouTube channel to watch the video. YouTube is the best place to watch these sort of videos. But I thought it was really refreshing the way he spoke, Stevie. He came out. He was he was full of confidence. It, it wasn't arrogance. You know, he said, I, "I want to be the best player that I can be." Michael Beale obviously said in his press conference on the Friday that he sees Kamar Roof as a starter as well. And Ruth said, "Well, that's what that's what I want to be." He talked about his, his injury problems. He said, "You know, it's impossible for people to understand what it was like in, unless you went through it." He talked about the expectations at the club and how every fan that comes up to him um, talks about fifty six, and that's the kind of pressure that that he wants. You know, it's, it is too early to look to the to the game on Sunday due to the fact that there's such a big game coming up on on Wednesday night, Stevie. But I mean, would Ruth be in contention to start? Hundred percent, he would. He would at least be in contention for me to play a part of the game. You know, ne not necessarily thinking about Sunday yet with regards to selection and things like that, but he's in there. You know, he's playing a part for me, whether it's starting or he plays, you know, 30 minutes at the end or whatever. But, you know, as I said, if, you, if you've got a chance falling to anybody in that squad, you want it to fall to Kamar Roof. So more than more than happy for, for him to be around that selection. And and like you said, you and see with the press conference, I thought he was quite humble. He came in, he didn't say, like, he when he was talking about his injuries and stuff like that, he didn't ever once say, you know, oh, poor me. And he said, I, I don't need people to give me sympathy in that, but I just need to kind of explain, you know, what I've been through and what it's like. He feels like he's over it. He feels like he's, his fitness has improved. He had that hip operation, which obviously he feels that that, that was vital to his recovery. He's had that now. He's, he's doing everything he needs to do. I thought he looked sharp. You know, I thought he did well. I think I would need to be 
watching the game again properly. I haven't done that yet, but on first viewing up there, I'm sure that he took the only real chance he got and he finished it really well. And that's that's what he does. He's a, he's a very clinical striker. So, no, listen, I'm delighted he's back. I'm delighted he's fit. And I just hope he'll stay that way because if he does, he'll deliver numbers for us. Yeah, no, no, I tend to agree. Obviously, he's not in the European squad for, for Wednesday night, so he, he won't feature in that. So it does keep him fresh for the weekend as well. Guys, thanks for everyone who's watching. There's loads of you on today. And again, everyone that smashes a like and subscribe, that's truly appreciated by Stephen, Stevie and I. It makes a, a massive difference to what we do. Just generally, before we go and talk about PSV and reflecting the weekend, there's a couple of other things to talk about. But just first, it's, it's how the narrative changes, Stevie, in, in Scottish football. You know, it's you know, it's two clubs that's got no disrespect to any other team, but it's you know, it's two clubs that go for the title um, every season, including this one. And you look after the Kilmarnock game, and there was a lot of negativity surrounding Rangers, wasn't there? But you know, since then, it's it's not always been electrifying performances or, or perfect performances, but I do think you're starting to see gradual in, improvement. And you look at the pressure; it was perhaps, if you in my, in my opinion, maybe slightly unfairly on Michael Beale after that result. But you know, it, it, it seems like the pressure is definitely you know more on on, on Brendan Rodgers and Celtic at the moment, and it shows how quickly football can change. If you remember, we sat here last week, you and we we did this Rangers review, and sometimes. When I speak, I, I'm not meaning to sound condescending or lecturing to folk, but I said, you know, football can change really quickly. It had changed that weekend there. We were through in the League Cup, they weren't. And it gives gives us a real opportunity. But I said at the time, I said that criticism is fair. When you criticise the commandant result, the selection, how we performed, I think that's totally fine. And as supporters, it was it would be disingenuous of us to sit and go, do you know what? We were unlucky, you know, it was the right thing, it was the right team and stuff. That's not right. People can see through that. But the, the shouts the other way of, you know, be out, be won't see to the end of September, all that kind of stuff, that, that doesn't help anyone. It certainly doesn't help the players when we get on their backs, when they're just in the door and, and stuff like that. So I just kind of wanted people to, to concentrate on us and take it game by game and, and just try and give us the, the time and the patience that we needed. I think you can see, although Saturday wasn't a complete performance, I think there was a real spell during that game that we looked very promising. The only regret I have is that we didn't go on and get more goals, and I thought we were well worthy of it. But all of a sudden, you, you're looking at individual performances. You get guys like Rabi Matondo now who is playing like a completely different player, and it's all to do with confidence. He's got the fans singing his name and the fans are on his side. And look how he performs when that happens. Look at Cyril Dessers. If, if we want him to really perform, we need to get behind him as well. And I don't mind people saying, you know, he's not looked great or we're a bit unsure about him. But look at the Rabbi Matondo effect of, of judging somebody too quickly and getting on their back and but being behind them. And look how he's doing now. So it's just a kind of... It's not a... A call to arms or anything like that or try to tell people what to do. I'm just trying to point out that patience, we, we really need to try and give the team a chance and, and settle in. And of course, look, you know, you get a result like we did in the first day and, and everybody's going to be down and stuff like that, but let's keep it kind of relevant and, and practical because there's a long way to go in this league. And I happen to think that the more games we play, individually and collectively, we're getting a lot stronger. Regardless of what happens against PSV midweek, that's a really tough game. But we're in with a fighting chance. So let's just take it game by game. Hopefully we see a little bit more in every single game and, and we just keep getting behind the team because we've got a real opportunity this year. As as that comment said, I don't like to talk about them too much, but Ange Postacoglu was a, look, I think it's fair to say, was a brilliant coach. And he had a really well-oiled machine. They they were relentless. They don't have that this year. Brendan Rogers has certainly not produced it yet. He has a good coach, and I'm sure he will get there at points. But I don't think they're the same animal they were last year. So Rangers have got a real opportunity to kick on. I happen to think we've got a really good coach who, who can take us to where we want to be. So let's just get behind the team as much as we can and, and take it game by game and kick on. Yeah, no, no, I, tend, I agree with what you say there, Stevie. And William Burns, also a big fan of your work, which you, you must be posting LinkedIn, Steve. I don't think I follow you in LinkedIn. Um, you do, mate. You do. I do. How you do, yeah. mate? Uh, I don't, of course I don't. you do. Why wouldn't you? 
I don't, I don't really use it that much, which is probably something I should start doing. So uh, maybe no, I don't. I must admit, I must be honest. I appreciate the comment from William. He he kind of posts on it quite a bit, and I appreciate that. I think it just all links in from when I post out the actual articles and things like that. So yeah. match reports and things. So I appreciate the the kind of support both on here. There's so many people you and honestly, when you go to games and that stop you and see you're brilliant on Rangers Review, really like listening to you and that kind of stuff. So I really appreciate it. It's nice you get confidence. I remember going to the, the PSV game in Tuesday, uh, in Tuesday night. I told you this in the, in the press room. and I, 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 was on, <laughs> I was on the subway heading to work, you know, full of optimism ahead of a, a massive game. And, and the guy goes like, are you doing Robertson for Rangers Review? I went, oh, yeah, mate, how are you doing? Looking forward to the game. He's like, yeah. He's like, you're not as fat as you look like on the TV. <laughs> so I was uh, completely taken aback by that. And uh, I've just been eating salad since, actually. My confidence is uh, down in the gutter at the moment. But... Um, that's funny as well because you've not got a, a pick on you in real life. I know, I know, but uh, hey, well, yeah. uh, Slim Jim was his name. He, he tweeted about it after having a laugh at me, so thanks for that, Jim. Uh, hope, <laughs> you're watching, hope you're watching this morning. I might see you on the, the subway on Sunday, but just one player I want to kind of highlight or, uh, on Saturday and just generally his performance this, performance this season is Borna Barisic. Um, I'm going to write about him at some point this week. I think he's had a good start to the season. I thought he was very good uh, on the weekend. I thought he was one of Rangers' best players. And you know, one aspect of his game he gets criticised for quite a lot is his defending. But I thought his defending, again, at the weekend was pretty good and quite solid. And if you look at it, Steve, he's, that's four assists for the season now. And some of those assists have came at really, really crucial times. The one at the weekend was for the first goal to break the deadlock. You know, To go ahead in these games is, is so important away from home. You look at the one against Livingston, it was for the, uh, the cross into the Danilo. It was 1-0 at the time, and it was starting to get a little bit nervy at Ibrox. And it was an unbelievable ball in for Danilo to get the second goal. It was obviously the assist against Servette, which is the most important one this season, uh, for James Tavernier. And it was the home one against Servette as well. I had a lot of criticism in Borna Barisic. I think some of it is pretty fair um, at times over the last 12 to 18 months. But this season, you have to give them credit where it's due. Yeah, we do. So we spoke about this. I don't know if anyone's seen our, our preview show before Ross County on Saturday. It was difficult to hear us because we the, the tannoy system that, that you and then I had up there was right behind our heads. So it was difficult for us not only to hear the questions, but I said on Saturday, I wasn't really concerned about the left-hand side as much as I was concerned about James Tavernier on the right-hand side. I said I thought both would be fine, but I was a little bit more concerned because I was comfortable with how Borna was looking. Now, I go back and forward on Borna Ewan all the time. I really do. But the facts are that when Borna Barisic is good, Rangers predominantly play well because he's such a, a weapon on that left-hand side. The issue I've got with Borna, and I think the issue we all have, is sometimes he goes you know, and, and turns back too quickly. But his ability to cross the ball and his delivery, already assisting in, in four goals at this point, you know, he'll get... He'll get Easy a dozen assists this season, you easily if he keeps going the way he is. And the thing about it is, he's got more targets to hit now, and he's got a lot more kind of attacking power that he maybe didn't have last year. So there's a potential for it to be a lot higher. But Borna Barisic probably gives you more uh, attacking wise than he, he costs you at the other side. There's just a desire, I think, from the support for a freshness. And some and sometimes you know that can that can spill out into not necessarily the right players. Now, I'm one of them. I will say I'm one of them because everybody's heard me on this show saying that I'm. I go back and forward, and sometimes I'm grumpy with them, and I don't want them in the team. And I thought that Yilmaz would come in, and he'd probably be first choice and kick on. That opinion's changed again because of his form that he's in. He's obviously the first choice left left back at the moment, so. He's into his last year. I think we do require a long-term kind of change in there. But for what he's producing at the moment, as you said, defensively, I thought he was very good against Bakayoko, against PSV in the home tie as well. So, you know, Borna's come on to a wee bit of form. I hope it continues because in the next two games, if he notches those numbers, we're going to do well. So let's hope that, that, um, that that's the case. Somebody, Chris, is, see on Chris's point there about coincidence that he's not playing with Ben Davis. Maybe it's more of a coincidence that Jack Butland's in goals and we've got somebody that's so commanding that comes and takes crosses, that's so vocal and encouraging. Um, and that's not a criticism of what's before him. 
But you and I, you and you and I both commented on the amount of times that Jack Butland came and commanded his area on Saturday. There was at least, I would say, at least four or five crosses he took cleanly. The one in the first half, for example, that's right at the edge of the box and it's a long kind of punt in. In years gone by, if we don't clear that, that's bouncing and it's causing issues in the box and then we're indecisive and then things happen. That that whole side of it is taken away. Now, yeah, he comes and he maybe misses one at the end and he's done that before. But if he doesn't come for that one at the end, there's a free header for the boy. So he done enough, even though it was a bit scary to kind of put the boy off. So Jack Butland for me is an incredible start to his Rangers career in terms of that commanding presence in the box and I think that's helped the defenders. You've seen Connor Goldson have a couple of good games as well and I'm, I'm quite comfortable with how that's looking. So maybe there's a different dynamic back there that's also helping Barisic as well. Yeah, I agree with Boris Barisic. It's something I plan to ask Michael Beale about actually but sometimes when I'm filming it's difficult to get the questions up from the back of the room because it's it's not a great um, point to be to be asking from, but in terms of his contract with a year left, I, th- I think Rangers have to be pretty relaxed about that because you know how much did the Rangers sign Barisic for? It wasn't a huge fee. I think it was around about one point eight million. And you look at the services gave the club over those years. Yeah, I agree. He's definitely paid that back, so I don't think it's a case of thinking, oh, we need to tie Borna Barisic down to a long term deal. If it came to it and, and he ran his contract down, and they left in the summer. And Rangers shook hands and went, you know, thanks to the service, 1.8 million. It's been a great buy. You know, you're getting, you're, you're moving into your thirties. We'll, we'll look to, you know, bring something new into that position and, and look to the future. I think that would be fine as well. But you know, if he does have a really good season, then you know, could they extend his contract by maybe a year or two? Yeah, that's a possibility as well. I don't think there's any real rush to, to get that done, and he's certainly not going to leave um, during this window. And I think many people at the start of the summer would have said Barisic be a player that we'd be happy to see go out the way. In terms of Yilmaz as well, I think Yilmaz had a really good end to last season, but certainly from my point of view, the jury is still out on, on Radvan Yilmaz. I thought it was interesting that Michael Beale's comments after the game, he said that you know James Tavenier and Borna Barisic essentially were first choice. And he had two younger ones in, in Dujan, Dujan and, and Radvan pushing him. At the moment, Borna Barisic has the shot and if he keeps playing to this, this performance level, he'll keep it. For me, though, and this is a great point that, that Ian put out here, the next two games are massive for Barisic. You know, he has had a good start to the season, but his, his problems against Celtic and, and Lila Bada at the back post have been well documented in recent years. And going away to, to PSV, as you said, Stevie, as good as he was against Bakayoko last week. And I thought Nicholas Raskin done a really good defensive job and, and provided them support there as well. He's ultimately going to be judging these big games, and you know if he doesn't, if he has at fault for a goal, then you no, know, the criticism will will rain down on Bora Barisic. So, you know, as, as much as there's reason to be optimistic about his performance levels recently, it's hugely important that you know he puts in good performances these two games because you know as we said earlier, the narrative can turn um, very quickly in Scottish football. Anything else you want to kind of pick up on from the weekend, Stevie? Before we, we go and talk about PSV. No, what I would say, though, is uh, you're entirely right, and I think it's quite funny that um, we could be sitting here in a month or two and I'll be complaining and moaning about Borna Barisic. So it's just what we do as kind of football fans, and I think, you know, it's right to praise him. What I would say, pick up maybe from the weekend, James Tavernier, I thought, was terrific. Scored an unbelievable goal, which I think deserves credit. I asked Michael Beale about the, the kind of fullback situation. And, you know, the, the kind of criticism or worry behind their comments. And I think he was a wee bit a wee bit pointed with his, his response in defence of them both. Not pointed as an us or an attack, but just defensive of what they bring to the side. And I thought Tav was, was excellent. I spoke to Tav afterwards and he said he was, he was happy with it and wanted to add to the collection. And by the way, I think that collection now stands at something ridiculous, like 104 goals and 117 assists. And we still moan about James Tavernier. So I was the first to say on Saturday, I think he needs to do um, a wee bit more this season, but he had a performance on Saturday that I was hopeful, that I was much more hopeful with. And by the way, he's more than capable of having a moment on Wednesday night or Sunday that, that produced big results for us. So I just think in terms of the weekend, June, I thought it was overall a good workmanlike performance. What I liked about it is something that we don't often do is after the first goal, we went and killed 
we went straight in, got another one, and then we were able to manage the game. Because I don't think, as Michael Beale said, I don't think we were much in control as we maybe liked in the second half. But we still created some massive opportunities. I think we were through at least a couple of times. Rabbi Matondo had, had a really good cameo again. So all in all, I came away from that really, really pleased. I also think as well, Ewan, on Ross County, I think they'll cause teams problems. Mm-hmm. I think they're a good side uh, in our league. I think they'll be safe. I think they'll do absolutely fine. But the, that wee guy, Danda, that they have, the number 10, we commented on it. He's a very good player. Jordan White's a handful up front. And that was the only moment, I think their header, just after the second half started, was the only moment, I think, that we really looked in any any trouble. But aside of that, thought we handled it really professionally in a really good performance. So I was actually, even before the three o'clock kickoff started, I felt really happy and and really kind of um, positive about what I'd seen. So all in all, at the weekend, I think it was a really good day for Rangers. Yeah, I'll just quickly read um, Michael Bill's comments on the fullbacks. I thought they were very interesting. Like you said, it, it was a pointed answer, Stevie. I, it was you asked the question, it was a, a good question about the performance of the fullbacks. I say this numerous times, I think Michael Beale's very aware of uh, what gets said in the media and fan media and media. He's definitely very aware of it. Um, something I've noticed, you can just tell by his answers that he knows what's being said and, and knows what's not being said. Um, it's something definitely to keep an eye on because there's numerous times when he answers a question and he's a little hint or a little reference to kind of what's been said. And it's, you know, he's definitely aware of it that way. But um, he says, he's told, me, he's told me previously that he reads my stuff. So well, you had, a nice chat from, you had a nice chat from after the game, didn't you? I was uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, Ross County, but we won't go into that. But um, basically, he said, I don't see what you guys see. I think in Europe, they've scored and assisted domestically, do the same. My job was to defend, and we got a clean sheet today, so everything is positive. I think we have two young ones pushing them in Red Baron and Dujon. It was the same with Nathan and Calvin before, but they were sold for a lot of money. So I think they know that there's two players breathing down their necks, and that's only good for them. So the last point in there about having the kind of competition for places there, that, that's only good for pushing them on and making sure that if they don't perform to the levels that are required, then you know um, that their places will get taken. So um, really interesting comments from Michael Beale. Lastly, before we go and talk about the PSV game, there's, there's loads to talk about this morning, so we'll, we'll keep it going. There's almost a thousand of you watching at the moment, so that, that's great to, to see. And again, if you do enjoy what we're saying, uh, hit that like button. It does help us a lot. John Lunch from Stevie. I always get a little bit a stick because I'm a I'm a big supporter of Lundstrom. I think that he's definitely got a job to do in the Rangers team. There's no argument that if you're playing against a team at home and you've got to break them down, that the John Lundstrom isn't suited for that type of game. I think it's horses for courses. I think in a box to box game that Lundstrom can be really really effective. And I thought he was good uh, at the weekend. I think there was a couple of moments where he broke up the play really well. There was one drive and run in particular in the first half. I thought was excellent as well. Um, John Lundstrom, for you, I mean, what do you make of his, his performance at the week at the weekend? My old pal, Lunny. Um, yeah, <laughs> I, thought he was, I thought he was very good. And to be fair, you, I did say throughout the game, I thought he was very good. I actually thought that Nico Raskin had a really, really good game off the ball. His pressing ability to pick up the second ball was really, really good on Saturday. And when Rangers got good for that spell between kind of 15 minutes after you know, kind of, we started a wee bit tentatively, Ross County. There were a couple of cross passes that didn't quite make it, and they pressured without really doing too much. I thought that we really controlled it, and I thought Lundstrom was was a heartbeat of, of all that. And But Nico Raskin next to him, I thought his pressure and um, ability to kind of harass the opposition every time they got the ball and pick up wee second balls was great. I had a discussion with a lad about it online on, on Saturday, and he made the point that Raskin should be better on the ball. I think I said that last week here. That I, I agree with that. But being young, I think what Raskin tries to do is he plays between the lines a lot more. Like he tries to force passes and, and maybe doesn't always get them right. Whereas John Lundstrom gets the ball and, and recycles it pretty well. So I thought that Lunny was, was better. I thought the tempo that he set on Saturday was better. And that's one of my main criticisms of him that I think he's too slow sometimes. So, Ewan, we know there's a player in there. He's, he's proved it before that he had a tremendous spell for three, four months on the way to that final. And I thought he did really well. But maybe, and this is something I've commented on and we've commented on before, there's so much competition now in there. There's six players for, for three positions. So, 
maybe he realizes that he's got up his game and really perform as well. And the other thing is as well, in fairness to him, he probably knows that already, but in fairness to him, they did have a really big preseason. He's maybe had a rest here and there. And maybe that the fruits of that kind of labor is, is starting to come through because he is fit, he is a fit guy. And I thought he, he was really, really strong in the midfield at, at the weekend. So yeah, he, he certainly deserves credit for his performance. Yeah, it brings on to the PSV game that was shown us comment here. Lundstrom is suited for European games. I tend to agree with that. Uh, something I've spoken about before, written about before, is that I think if you're playing a team with a low block and you've got to break them down and Lundstrom isn't suited to that because sometimes he does move the ball too slowly and sometimes it's not that, he's better driving with the ball than he is at passing at times. Um, so I think in an end-to-end game, a physical game, he, he's really, really good. I think he's in, I'm going to come into contention for the PSV game as well. I'm not sure he'll start, but the thing with Lundstrom as well, it's something that Bill, Bill was a fan of, is, is in build-up play, he often drops into that kind of right centre-back position and Rangers can go to a back three. Uh, at times, and they push the fullbacks on. Lundstrom provides that protection to to James Tavenier, especially on the right hand side. So that could be a feature of the game um, going into Wednesday night in Hoven. Joshua is in Eindhoven as we speak. He'll be on the briefing tomorrow, I believe. So we'll talk about potential lineups and things like that tomorrow with Joshua. But Stevie, go into the game. I don't think any Rangers fans are under any illusions. It's going to be incredibly difficult. They are top side. That they are the massive favourites. Uh, if you look at the bookies odds and things like that, that ahead of this game, Rangers have that safety net of of the Europa League. But you know they go out there and they've, they've still got a real chance to to get into the Champions League. They've done it last year as well. It's, it's well known that Rangers have a very good record against uh, PSV in European competition. What's your kind of thoughts and feelings going into the game? Well, I arrive on Wednesday. You and we fly out on Wednesday at 11 o'clock. So I'm confident. I'm positive about it. I realise that the, the size of the challenge, they're hugely favourites. They've got some incredibly good players. They play really, really well. They've also been favourites the last three times that they've played us in the best part of the year that we've met and they've not managed to beat us yet. So I go out there realising the size of the task, but I also utmost confidence in this team that we can win this game. I think we can smash and grab. And if you look at guys like Rabbi Matondo, who's it's incredible now that we're, he's, he's my kind of go-to. Like I would have told you in the summer that he doesn't have a future at the club. And I think that was fair. I don't think anyone said, well, hold on, you know, this boy's actually a bit of a gem. But it turns out he could be massive for us midweek when you think about the fact that, you know, the way that they're going to come at us and the way that we break... If we use him properly, then I think we've we've got a real opportunity. I'm not sure he'll start, Ewan, but as a, a weapon from the bench, the pace of Sima and the, and the pace of Matondo could be absolutely spot on. So I don't underestimate the size of this challenge in the slightest, Ewan, but it doesn't mean I'm not optimistic for it. I don't see why there's any reason why we should be going out there thinking, well, it's a foregone conclusion, we're going to get beat. This is the Champions League. It's where all the players want to be. It's why the likes of Todd Cantwell, Nico Raskin, Dessers, Danilo, all the names that we've signed came here because they want to play Champions League. Don't underestimate that desire from our players as well to have that. So PSV had a lot to say last week. They had a lot to say in the tunnel after it, a lot to say to our players. So I'm really looking forward to seeing how we react and what we do because you know they're very confident and they think, they think it's going to be a whitewash on Wednesday night. And Rangers are never better when we're written off. So I'm really looking forward to it. And do you know what? I back them. I back this team 100% on Wednesday night. And I'm looking forward to seeing it unfold. You and Joshua get to go to Eindhoven and Amsterdam. I'm stuck in Glasgow for the game. So I'm not jealous at all. Uh, to be fair, that. I'm going out myself. So this isn't a, a working trip for me. I'll be with the Bears in the away end. And I'm really looking forward to it. So hopefully I'll see a few familiar faces I'm sure people won't miss this old dome up here and all. So look forward to seeing the guys out there and I'm meeting up with Martin and Adam at Heart and Hand and stuff. So, you know, I'm hoping that there's a, a few celebratory drinks afterwards as well. But I'm really looking forward to the trip. You and I genuinely believe, and it's not just bravado or that, I know how difficult it's going to be. But if you ask me now, I think we can sneak it 1-0. I think we can do it again. And I think they'll be concerned about it as well. And, and the longer it goes they'll start to get nervous, the crowd will start to get nervous and stuff as well. So, you know, I, I back this I back this team. I know how difficult it's going to be, 
but we can do it. I think um, if Rangers can get through, it'd be brilliant to see. We've got a camera right on uh, Joey Veerman. He's had a lot to say um, recently. He's not the only one. Yeah, he's not the only one. one. Maybe the worst offender, Stevie. Um, I thought you were going to say you want to have a camera on me and Eindhoven afterwards. We could probably (laughs) aim that, to be honest. But, um, yeah, that would make good viewing. It's a good content idea, actually. So maybe I'll suggest that to to Josh when I speak to him later today. But, yeah, Josh was over there. Um, for us for the game, so we have loads of content. The press conferences tomorrow, isn't it? Um, and Einhoven, I think Michael Beale's done so many press conferences this week, he must be getting sick of the sight of us. So, um, we'll see what he has to say there. Transfer window as well. Your know, fans obviously love transfer season, it's, it's coming to that um point in the window now where I think it's just over a week left of the window. Rangers, I think, might have a bit of business to do, Stevie. Just start with Yanis Hadji going and loan to. Alaves in Spain, it, you know, from our understanding at the moment, it's a, it's a straight loan. There's no kind of obligation to buy in there. Um, it doesn't mean he will end up there, but it's, is that a case of Yanis put himself in the short window for next summer? Yeah, I think it is. I think, you know, I would have taken £4 million pounds for Yanis had Yanis sell on fee. Now, I know that causes a wee bit of division and a lot of people think we should get more. There's two ways to look at what's going to happen you, and we discussed this at the weekend as well. If he goes out and has a really good year, then there's a positivity because we can then say, well, he's still got two years. He's proved it out in La Liga with Alaves and stuff like that. So let's, you know, get more for him. If he goes out there and he doesn't do so well, teams will maybe say, we're only going to give you £2 million. So it's an interesting one with Yanis Hadji. I wish him all the best. He might go out there and smash it and we decide we're keeping him. So there's all options for us. I don't think we're in a rush to really have to sell him and take that £4 million because we have done good business and good income from Fashion Sakala. Antonio Chola will come to Glen Kamara in a wee minute. Um, so there's potential there for us to take him money in. We've still got money to spend and there's a few targets being, being kind of spoke about which we'll also come to in a minute. So, with regards to Yanis Hadji, I've got nothing but respect for the lad. Controversial, Ewan, I don't think it's a bad move for Rangers either. I'm not sure that Yanis Hadji plays. I'm not sure that Yanis Hadji sitting on, you know, £25,000 a week is doing us enough from the bench, etc., to to be worthy of, of kind of staying in that. So, I think it's best for all parties. You know, if he does do well, we can we can figure it out when he comes back. But it's, I think it's a good move for Rangers. I, I've got to be honest, I don't think he plays. I don't think he plays ahead of Cantwell. I don't think he plays ahead of Sam Lammers. So regardless of, how we might, yeah, regardless of how we might think Sam Lammers has started. So I think it's the best move all round. And I don't mean that as a criticism of Yanis Hadji, excuse me. I really don't mean that at all. I just think that it's the best thing. I don't think he's getting game time here. Yeah, no, I think it makes sense for all parties, like you said, Stevie, as well. But, I mean, there was these comments last the other week and uh, there's some things he said which I think are fine. I think any player wants to be playing and it's, it's okay to express that. I didn't like his comments. I, I wrote about this in my piece about Robert David Matondo last week. I didn't like his comments about having nothing to prove. Um, I think a footballer's always got something to prove. Every time they go on the pitch, they've, they've got to show their quality. And I think that especially with, with Yanis Hadji's situation with, with doing it for so long for injury, I think he definitely had something to prove. And I, mean, I don't think those comments would have went down overly well. Um, but, you know, he's he's well-liked in the, in the fan base. You know, he put up that men- message yesterday as well. He did have that. He was very... It's important, you and sorry to cut you off and, and say something. See on those comments, it's probably important to state Yanis Hadji move went on slightly longer than it should have done. Yanis Hadji was supposed to leave last week. That's why he wasn't including the European squad. That's why he didn't start against Morton. So I think it's important to say that. We've had that clarified. So that's the reasons why um, the club fully expected this deal to be done maybe 10 days ago. So for people maybe wondering if there was a knock-on for Yanis Hadji's comment yeah. and maybe wondering why Yanis Hadji himself done that press conference, I think that's a fair wonderment. How it works is... Basically, the media guys will go in. There's a media pool of normally six or seven, and it's a volunteer to go and do it. Yanis Hadji put himself forward. I think, obviously, he wanted to say what he wanted to say. But Yanis Hadji, at the point of European squad, Morton and things, was not supposed to be here. 
and not expected to be here. So it wasn't a kick on to those comments. You sorry to interrupt you. I just thought it was apparent. You know, his comment, his comments didn't have any reason why he wasn't kind of selected for the European squad. I think a lot of people looked into that, but you know, and also Ravi Matondo, as he proved by kept coming off the bench and, and, and scoring, was um, it, you know showed why he was in the team. But I, I, I stand by. I, I didn't like when players come out, come out and say they've got nothing to prove. Um, I think it's a little bit arrogant and. Um, you look at how you look at Kamar Roof and, and Ryan Matondo, they've both shown in recent weeks they've got plenty to prove. You know, they've wanted to show to the manager that they want to be here, they want to play football. So um yeah, that will Yanis Hadji won't be at Rangers this season, but another player who, who won't be at Rangers next season is Glenn Kamara. The, the move to Leeds United is edging closer. Looks like Rangers will get a good fee, um, around five million pounds for Kamara. With Hadji and Kamara going out, Stevie, would you like to see another player or two coming in? What I would say about Glenn Kamara is before we talk about potential incomes, there's a few things to clear up on names that have been linked. Glenn Kamara, the ball is firmly in Leeds United's court. They need to follow up and follow through the kind of, I think it's at the moment, there's a verbal offer and things sitting with the club. Rangers will demand and will look for, and I think Leeds are willing to meet it, £5 million, which I think is what we're going to get for Glenn Kamara. It's now up to Leeds to firm that up and, and carry it on. So the next few days with that is be vital. I think we've all, you know, I've spoken about this. It feels like it's as long as, as any transfer rumour this summer with Glenn Kamara going to Leeds. I've, I've mentioned it to to um, Derek and yourself several times on this show. So I'm hoping now that this will, will finally come to fruition and, and he'll move out purely because it's best for everyone. And £5 million pounds for Glenn Kamara sell on fee I would have jumped at as well so give me that any day of the week and I'm quite happy so I would be looking for us to add one I am looking for us to to bring certainly at least one in I would look for two but I think we're edging towards one and I think the club have learned a slight lesson and I've said this I spoke about it in my article actually you and I've always felt like Rangers, the feedback of last season when they qualified for the Champions League and they said all their business was done and didn't spend in the backlash, I think was understandable from the support who were looking for somebody in. I think they've learned a lesson there. And I think that come Wednesday night, regardless of whether or not we'll go to the Champions League, I think they've deliberately left one behind, which we're going to add to the squad in terms of kind of quality and, and things like that and to avoid... The kit, what happened last last year because we'll all be looking for that one coming in. Who it is is going to be interesting, but there's it's certainly it's more a case at the moment is who's been ruled out than really who we, we know is coming in. You, yeah, no, I, yeah, no, I, I completely agree. We'll, we'll talk about some names quickly before we wrap up. It has been a longer show today, guys. Um, there's nothing wrong with that, of course. We can go to these longer shows, just been so much to talk about. Ahead of what is a massive week for the club, we've had the Ross County game, we've had the PSV game, we've got next weekend. Uh, transfer window closes on the 1st of September as well. I was checking my, my calendar there because I always, in my old job as well, took transfer deadline day off as a holiday because I, I can't stand it. I'm not the biggest fan of the transfer window at the best of times you get. Especially in the modern day with social media, I think when you just like, find people on there are just putting out stuff which just isn't true and it's so easy for people to gain a following by stuff which just isn't true because um, people are so... First day for you know demands on on transfers. So if anyone starts tweeting things about moves and people just take things from our sources, not a fan of it at all, Stevie. But in terms of any names, anyone you want to raise in terms of coming in? So obviously the big names have been kind of doing the rounds. Love a WhatsApp message, you. I think See, I'm the opposite. Know. I'm the opposite. I'm. Listen, there's, there's so many trusted sources that I, I would speak to about things like yourself and other people who know things, but you've seen social media, these accounts pop up all the time. And it's like, mate, do you know what I mean? You, you don't know what you're talking about, just leave it. So, but anyway, you, 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 you know nothing. what you're talking about. So, on you go. <laughs> you, poor you, ain't got nothing but hassle this year and, and told us there would be a sign in on the Thursday. And by, you know, quarter to eight and the Thursday, everybody was, was having a go at him. And sure enough, eight o'clock, here it comes. So, yeah, I'm the same as you. I'm not an overly fan, just because of the pressure of trying to get things right. So what we have done is we, we've spoken to the club on Harry Suter. Harry Suter, according to Rangers, is 100% not coming to the club. That is not happening. So it wasn't elaborated on whether or not we are interested or we've tried and it's just not happening. What the club say is 100% that's not happening. 
when we asked about some of the other names, Jesse Lingard, Aiden Hazard, the wild names that have been doing the links, that was more or less laughed off. So Michael Beale said there's one or two names out there that are close to the truth. I think he said that last week. And that's interesting because the only names doing the rounds have been them that I'm aware of. I've not picked up on any other kind of rumours, Ewan. I might have missed it. But it's going to be interesting. I think we're edging towards looking at a winger more than we are bringing in a centre half. And if I was to guess, I would say that we're going to bring in a forward winger type player before the window shuts. I don't think anything depends on what happens um, come Wednesday night. I don't think that's a factor. I think Rangers' outgoings and incomings, when you think about, you know, a million for Malik Tillman, maybe half a million for Tukowski, the Polish lad that went back. Then you look at Fashion Sakala, four million, Antonio Cholak, two and a half, Glenn Kamara, potentially five million pounds. That's all good business for the club. You're looking at the best part, I think, if my sums are right, of 12 and a half, 13 million. And that's more or less exactly what we've spent. Now, that's great business. And people say we've not really backed the manager and things like that. But we're no longer a club that can just spend 15 million. And what it does, especially with financial fair play and things like that, if come January time, you we need to get another body in or we need to get a, a player in, we can do it because there is room to do it. So I'm quite happy with, with how we've looked. I would think and hope that there's a, a budget for Michael Beale to go and add one. If we can find a player that he really wants, and I should imagine by this point he will know, and there might be a few opportunities from the English market that might pop up, maybe on loan or whatever. So I think potentially we've still got that bit of business to do. I've spoke about it, I've written about it last week. And I still have that opinion that, that one will definitely come in. can only tell you what the club says with regards to the likes of Harry Suter and stuff like that. There was a lot of noise last week that it, it was definitely happening. So I can only tell, I don't have any insight into to what's going on or who is maybe coming in at this moment. So hopefully if it does happen, we'll find out you and on the channel and stuff like that. But at the moment, I know as much as everybody else. So I can only really pass on. It'll not be the first time that Rangers have denied something and then a player pops up, so I'd keep an open mind on it, but certainly that's the club's stance at the moment. Yeah, no, it's certainly a good point you made, Stevie, about being too cautious. I think Aaron Ramsey was one that, I think we didn't we say that he wasn't coming and then he came. I mean, well, some of you said he wasn't coming. Other I wasn't people... here. I wasn't here at the time, Stevie. I wasn't. I was in another media company, so I'm, I won't go on yeah. that. I think, I think what we do is we do hear a lot that, that you know, players' names and, and we yeah. do check it out, and sometimes we get told by the club or, or other sources that there's no interest. We, we won't generally put that out there because no. it's, it's just not really something that we, we'll do. But if we don't... Well, there's no it, gain for us, Ewan, is there? Because if we say it's definitely not happening and then it does happen, people will say, oh, well, you're wrong. But I think the thing is this morning with so many people questions and asking about the rumours and stuff, I think it's fair that we say, look, we've asked, this is what the club say about it. So... We'll just need to, I think, keep an open mind on it. I think that's the best way to kind of say it to people and, and people to look at it. Harry Suter might rock up at Ibrooks, but at the moment, the club are, are certainly denying that as, as being a possibility and um, kind of laughed off the, the other names that are that kind of mentioned as well. So we'll just need to wait and see where the week goes. I wouldn't rule anything in or out 100%. I think you just need, as you said, keep an open mind. But with regards to what you're saying, I would agree. I just think it's, you know, if people are asking, Here's, here's what the club say about it. Yeah. Well, I think that wraps up nicely. Nice nice little people, nice little uh, bonus, Bruce a bonus for anyone who's, who's watching the whole show, getting a little bit of information there on transfers to wrap it up. Also, so much out there about players that Rangers are linked with over the next week. It'll probably get a little bit mental, but uh, we'll try and keep you guided on that over the next seven days. Stevie, it's my longer show. I apologise for, for keeping you so it's not long. you, mate. It's me. I rabbit on about everything. I should apologise to everybody, but no, it's not talking about Rangers and things. It's just it's a joy, isn't it? So, um, I appreciate everyone that's watched and kind of checked in, and I think we've done a good show, you, and I hope people have enjoyed it. Yeah, but it's been a, it's been a brilliant show today. I've certainly enjoyed it, and we've had loads of people um, watching today. Numbers have been crazily high, which probably just indicates how big a week it is for. Rangers, I say, a few people want what needs to be longer. It's not really up to me. <laughs> I enjoy chatting with Stevie. As always, I think I'll be back later in the week at some point. I'm not quite sure what day it is. It's Monday morning, so still getting 
back into the swing of things after an enjoyable Sunday off. Guys, thanks for all your nice comments. Do appreciate it, Stevie. As always, thank you for your time. We'll have this up on YouTube so you can go back and watch it again if you want. And we're back tomorrow. Take care. Have a safe week, guys.